Welcome back. In this video, I want to work on the hack keyboard and specifically what it means to have the shift key held down because while the hack computer doesn't deal with upper and lower case, it certainly deals with um, the characters that shifted up, up on the number keys, like for example, plus ampersand and so forth. Uh, before we dive in, though, to build that component, I wanted to do a little bit of refactoring just to clean some things up from a uh, prior video. Uh, what I want to do is make a component to represent what it actually means to be a scan code. A scan code consists of a shift register to hold in parallel 11 bits serially read from the keyboard's serial inline. It also contains validation logic to verify that 11 bits have been read, that odd parity has passed for the scan code itself, and that the start and stop bits are valid. It outputs the 8-bit scan code value, and also the first bit shifted in so that another scan code component can be chained. Finally, it accepts a reset so that bit counts can be synchronized across a group of scan code components. And so I think that neatly packages up what it means to be a scan code. So now let's, uh, re, let's reinsert this. Let's go back to our keyboard component and sort of clean up the implementation of a scan code using this implementation. So what I'll do here is remove the discrete components implementing a scan code and insert the new one just created for better encapsulation. So I'll put in two scan code components since we need to capture both make and break keys. I'll also split out what it means to be a break validator from being a scan code since I blended these notions before, which was not ideal. Okay, so that refactoring is now done. Let's run through a quick simulation to verify that I didn't break anything by clocking in a make code for the Z key and then a break code for the Z key verifying that the correct ASCII code comes through the output. Now let's work on the shift indicator. What does it mean to be shifted? It means that you are either holding the left shift key down or you're holding the right shift key down. You actually could be holding them both down, I suppose. Uh, and what we want this component to do is, if either of those are held down, uh, we want to return an indicator that basically says we're in a shift mode. And the thing about it is this needs to be returned in a stateful way, uh, such that it always returns true until both, if both are held down, but, it, but it, uh, if one or the other or both are then finally released, then it needs to return false. So we're going to need both scan codes to be able to determine this because the first scan code is going to contain the shift key and then the second code is going to contain the stop code or the break code once you've released the key. So let's take as input the scan code for the first and the second. Uh, so we'll just take the input And we need to know whether at least scan code number one is valid. So let's take that as an input as well. So what does it mean 
to be shifted. It means that we've received the scan code for either the left shift key or the right shift key. So the left shift key is scan code uh, one two hex. So let's put a comparator in here looking for that. And what does it mean to be right shifted? Well, that is hex code 59. So let's do the same thing. And so if we're valid, let's move these over and then So as long as we're valid and either of these are true, then we know we have a scan code 12 or 59. So let's go ahead and compute that logic here. And so we'll end with tunnels defining that we have a valid scan code 12 or scan code 59. Now next, what are we looking here for in scan code 2? Well, we're looking for the break code. So, and we know what that is, that's F0. Now we're also going to need its inverse, and I'm going to, it'll be obvious why here in a bit. So let's go ahead though and compute its inverse. Now, the tricky part of this component is that it needs to maintain state across keyboard ticks. And by the way, I did not add the keyboard clock as a required input because it for sure is required. So let's do that. Uh, and so if the user is holding down either one or both of these keys, we want to keep the state and, the, and acknowledge that uh, those keys are being held down while we're waiting for them to be released. So I propose we do that with, say, a flip-flop, a one-bit flip-flop. We 
need to wire the clock for sure. So let's do left shift first. So if we have the left shift scan code 12 and we do not have a break code, then that means that we need to set this flip-flop to indicate that we are in the middle of a shift operation. So we can do that with an AND gate hooked up to the set flag up here on top. And then likewise, this flip-flop will need to get reset if we have scan code 12 and we have the break key F0. Now the last trick is if neither of these are true and you know the keyboard keeps coming coming in with keystrokes, uh, we want the state of this flip-flop to be whatever the state was on the last clock tick. So how do we do that? Well, we'll just tie the output of the flip-flop to the input of the flip-flop, just like that. And then out of this flip-flop will give us the state of whether we're left shifted or not. So let's add a tunnel. called L shift. And so there we have state being maintained as to whether or not we are in, in an active left shift state. So the good news is then this then just can just be repeated for right shift. Now, finally, the output of this component is going to be whether or not we're shifted. So let's create our output. And whether or not we're shifted is whether or not L shift or R shift, or it could be both, are true. So we can capture that with an OR gate. And so I believe that should capture whether or not we are in a shifted state. So let's integrate this now into our keyboard component. So we need to grab a hold of our scan code outputs. So let's put a flag. And so let's hook those up to our, uh, to our shift indicator component. And then our valid indicator we called TOS valid, so we'll just use that.
And then of course we need the clock. So let's look at an ASCII chart real quick. Um, it is the case that there is a fixed difference between upper and lowercase characters. So if we look at the character A, we're 32 different between what it means to be an uppercase A and a lowercase A. And the same applies if you just go down the alphabet. Uh, all of these are 32 from each other. So you might think that it's a relatively easy thing to just perform some math. But it's not quite that simple. Uh, if we look at, say, the number 2, well, the shifted character for the number 2 is the ampersand, where it is right here, right? So it's decimal 64 for the ampersand, and then for the 2, it's 50, which is 14. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it's, you just can't say, I'll just subtract 32 and be done, which in, in a lot of code, you actually see that because you're just dealing with uh, the characters. What what this is to say is that in order to map shifted and unshifted characters, I propose that we need to use two different ROMs in order to do that. So let's put in another ROM to hold our uh, shifted or unshifted. We'll actually we'll label these. Um, let's take this one off. And we'll make we'll make this one the unshifted one. In fact, let's just, just avoid confusion. Let's just label it. And then we'll create another one called shifted. And we're gonna need more room. Now to just make sure that we have our good test data while I'm thinking about it, an unshifted Z, uh, from the last video, I had plopped in the ASCII value of a capital Z, um, but if we have now a duplicate ROM that has our unshifted codes in it, Z is now 7A. So let's update that while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so now it might come a little clearer how we send this, you know, um, ASCII code from this ROM or an ASCII code from this ROM. It's going to be based upon whether or not our shift indicator is true, and that can be done with a MUX. So let's move, let's move this over. because this is dealing with whether we have a break code or not, generally. Which is still valid, by the way. So now we need a multiplexer. So if we're if we're unshifted, then we want the ASCII from the unshifted ROM. If we're shifted, well then we want the code from the shifted ROM. And of course, the input for the MUX is going to be our shift flag. So let's uh, go ahead and put a tunnel just to keep our wiring neat. And then the output of this MUX will go into the input 
of this mux. And so I believe that wires in shift functionality. Okay, so let's test this. Let's just put in a scan code for the letter Z, unshifted. And uh, let's also stick a constant out here. That way it'll make this a little easier to translate so I don't have to look at binary all the time. At least I think this will work. No, it will not. Is there a way that you can look? Oh, maybe you can translate this. Oh yeah, you can translate the radix to hex. So let's do that. So let's say hexadecimal. Ah, that is better. Let's uh, reset our simulation. And what we're going to do is just put in the scan code for a Z. So not shifted. So we would expect 7A to come out of here. So let's do that. And sure enough, we have 7A coming out. And I also notice now that I'm looking at this, I did not hook up my other address line for my ROM, and so the shift obviously wouldn't work. So let me go ahead and we'll do it this way so I don't chop off my text like that. Now, okay, and so now the 5A is addressed, which, is, which makes sense, but of course it's not coming through the MUX because we're not shifted. So, all right, so far so good. This is working. So what happens now if we put in uh, a shift key ahead of putting in a Z key for uh, scan codes? So let's reset the simulation. So let's put in a shift key first. So shift, and I did not put in the scan code for shift, so let me do that. Right, so let's move these down. And so one of the shift keys, I forget whether it's light, right or left, um, was hex 12. And so the 11 bit scan code for shift is going to be equal to, it always starts with a one. I don't know what the next one is. And then one is zero 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 one, and then the next digit is a two, so that would be o o one o, and then the final bit has to be a zero, and so our parity bit is let's see, so there's one two, so to make it odd, it needs to have a one in it for a total of three. So that's what our eleven bit scan code for shift needs to be. So let's go ahead and put in the shift key, reset my simulation. Okay, so we have the shift in and nothing should happen, at least on the output, because there's nothing, the shift is technically not a character to be recorded, um, at least presented, I guess, for output. Uh, and so I would expect this to be zero, which it is. Uh, interestingly, we see the shift flag come on, which is a good sign, and it should stay on as we continue to receive um, additional uh, bits. So let's go ahead and put the Z key in now. Right, so this multiplexer, the shift is still on, which is good, and we're presented with 5A on the output, and so that makes sense. That's capital Z, and so yeah, it looks to me like uh, this is so far working. Now what has not been tested is uh, releasing of the shift key, right? So let's, um, all right, so the keyboard right now is in a state of simulation whereby somebody has pressed and hold down the shift key and they've typed in the letter Z. So if we want to complete this simulation, what we need to do is we need to put in 
the stop code for the Z key. And then we need to put in the stop code or the, or the break code. I say stop. I, I, I guess I really mean break. The break code for um, shift, right? So it would be break Z and then break shift. So I'm going to do that. I'll probably speed this up so you don't have to watch me punch it in. But um, what I'm expecting to have happen is shift goes out and there should be nothing on ASCII. From, from, from this point forward, there shouldn't be anything ASCII out showing up. And the shift should go off once the shift break is received. And so I have the break, the break code in for the Z key, and this is making sense. So we're positioned to the Z key, but the break indicators come on, which has kept the Z key from coming out of ASCII out. So, so far that, that continues to work correctly. So now let's put in the break code for the shift key. And I would expect shift to be off. So break code is on, which makes sense. And I would, but I would expect the shift code to be off. So why is that not the case? So this, this should be off. Why do we not have the break code here? This is the, this is the shift code, which makes sense up here. But down here, this should be the break code. Why is that not showing up? Let me go. Maybe I have a label wrong here somewhere um oh looky right here i wasn't sending in the scan code two i was sending in scan code one copy paste error oh boy but the simulation even though it's tedious, it does, you can see the state of everything sort of in flight and it makes it much easier to determine what's going on here. Okay, and you can see now that the shift has gone off, which is correct. And also that you can make this on the fly. I mean, that's, that's really cool too. The shift is now off. And yeah, so actually I think this is working. Let me go back to this. Um... Right, so there's our break code, here's our shift code, and into this AND gate, we're resetting this flip-flop, which should turn L shift off, and then of course L shift, R shift are both off, and then our shift is off, which all of that is now making sense. Yeah, so with that, uh, you know, probably more testing is in order, but I, I think we're, we're on our way to having a working keyboard. Next video, last bits that are that remain according to the specification in the elements of computing systems is you need a way to capture um, characters like arrow keys and and so forth so uh, that'll be the last bit of functionality before hooking it up to see it actually work thanks for watching